Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be talking about how to override or use the BIOS to determine core scheduling and override the behavior based off of the chipset driver or the Microsoft game mode settings. Now why would you want to do this? Well, if you want to use all 16 cores on a dual CCD Ryzen 9 CPU, for example, that has 3D vCache on one of the CCDs, but not the other. So, for example, the newly released 9950X 3D and the 9900X 3D, as well as the older 7950X 3D and the 7900X 3D, all four of those CPUs feature a single CCD with vCache and a second CCD that does not have the vCache, so just a standard you know, a standard Ryzen CCD. So the default behavior if you install the driver is such that it will utilize a power savings feature from Windows called core parking to help make sure that your game threads are scheduled on the vCache CCD. Now, the drawback of that is if you want to use all 16 cores and 32 threads while playing a game and the game is the focused window and you want other applications to be moved on to the second CCD. There isn't really a way to do that without using third-party tools like Process Lasso. But if you're someone who doesn't want to install third-party tools and you just want the system to always prefer the core assignment to favor the cache CCD as opposed to the frequency CCD, you can do that by changing the bio settings here. So we're gonna be demonstrating this using the ASRock Phantom Gaming motherboard. This is the Nova. However, this works on all of the other motherboards that are AM5 based. So the main thing you need to figure out is how to access the BIOS settings for your particular motherboard. In the case of ASRock, it's very easy. It's going to be under the advanced menu. And in here we have three different folders with the AMD name on them. So there's AMD common BIOS settings and the platform BIOS settings. So, and then there's also the AMD overclocking. Now, AMD overclocking, we're not going to cover because that is where Curve Optimizer, Curve Shaper, the PBO settings are. So we've detailed that in previous content. So today we're going to be looking at the AMD Common BIOS settings directory. So this one here. So inside this folder, you'll find that there is a bunch of other sub menu items. And this is standard from AMD. So this, this is nothing to do with ASRock or MSI or Gigabyte or ASUS for that matter. The motherboard manufacturers are only going to choose how they want to present these settings to the user. So in the case of ASRock, they just follow the standard AMD reference where everything is where it's supposed to be based off of the way AMD outlined it. So that's why it's easy to demonstrate this on an ASRock board. Some of them, like MSI for example, they change the location of the directories so it's not always in the same spot and it's also dependent on whether or not you have a dual CCD X3D CPU installed for some of these settings to even be visible. So the one that we're looking for is under the System Management Unit Common Options, the SMU Common Options. So we're going to go in here and right here at the top, the first setting is the one that we're looking for, CPPC Dynamic Preferred Cores. Now unfortunately, ASRock doesn't have a description explaining what this is, but what this is, is this is basically a thread scheduler bias control scheme. So basically what it means is the motherboard has the ability to automatically prefer certain cores on a priority basis for assigning work. If you want it to always prefer X3D vCache cores, you can specify cache and then what will happen is it will always just default assign work to the X3D CCD first and then once that one is loaded up then it'll start putting threads on the other cores. So this is probably the most optimal way to set up the system. If you're someone who wants to play games and also stream and use the other cores in the background without having to rely on the driver to control things or the something like process lasso for example so I have found that this is kind of the best happy medium where if I want to stream a game that's very CPU demanding for example Monster Hunter Wilds and I don't 
want one of the CCDs to be sitting idle, doing nothing, basically being in a low power state. I can set it to prefer cache, and then what will happen is the game is going to go on the cache cores because the game has the higher priority, and then everything else that's running in the background, like the stream software, the browsers, you know, email, whatever, all the other things, YouTube, all that stuff that's running in the background, that will then be on the faster performing CCD, so the system performance will be very fast. So this is what I would recommend you do if you're someone who doesn't want to use Process Lasso. Now, you don't have to use Process Lasso, and you also don't have to do this. If you're fine with the default behavior, following AMD's guidance on installing the latest chipset driver and just letting it take care of itself and use Microsoft Game Bar if you're playing games and you want it to remember that the game is supposed to use the Vcash course, you can totally do that, and that is fine probably for 95% of the people out there, even myself included. But if you're someone who just wants all the cores to be active all the time and you want to prefer the cache course for gaming, then CPPC Dynamic Preferred Cores, this is a, a really good setting in here to set this to cache. And you can still use the game bar and all the other stuff but this is something that makes it so that you don't actually need to use the game bar or game mode you can disable all that stuff and you're still going to get the best gaming performance because it's going to always assign the game to the x3d cores first so this is just a quick video on how and where to go to set this up so again, just to review, it is under the advanced menu for most BIOSes. This is true for ASRock as well as ASUS. I wanted to make this video just to provide some guidance on how to make it so that you can leverage all potential 32 threads while gaming so that you can take advantage of the multi-thread capability that a Ryzen 9 offers over something like a Ryzen 7. So if you guys found this video useful, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.